The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Media Match. A roundtable of Cowboys insiders. Dropping wisdom. And offering sizzling takes. On the current state of your Dallas Cowboys. Now your host, Nui Scruggs. Media Mash, here we go. It is Wednesday, hump day. Cowboys getting ready to go to Atlanta, GA, to take on the Atlanta Falcons. Jack, can, are you going to Atlanta? Can we do something real quick? Can the producer we change out the background? Man. They don't see it? See, look turn, look around behind. You. That's what the people see. Man, I just make put it on blast. Do your job. That I'm what, just saying. That, that what it say. You cut me off. I didn't cut. I mean, we just we. Okay, so in, in the TV world, people like Clarence are what I call Spielbergers. <laughs> oh. They try to be. They try to be Steven Spielberg and direct and do all this stuff. I mean, man, that's not your job. Your job is to be Tom Cruise. No, no, no. See, job. see, I, I disagree. I that, disagree. That's not your job. I disagree. What's your... I can hear better now. What happened? Anyway, <laughs> I, I, I disagree. <laughs> Spielberg again. <laughs> we're, we're we all in this together. We're all in this together. I think Jack may disagree. I know, you see, bringing up we know. all in this together on Wednesdays <laughs> and Thursdays. <laughs> we're we're all in this together. Oh boy! And Ooh. I, I want the show to look good. I'm all about the show. Well, and if yeah. we got players lounge outside of media match, it's nothing wrong with me as a member of the media match pointing out, hey, that's not the title of our show. That's not me trying to direct. That's just trying to make sure we're all together. Okay, let me show you. Tell you because you're 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 a. a you're not a TV guy. This is a, <laughs> this is a conversation that you have during the break, or better yet, you take this little phone you have and you text him. That's how you do this. What you do it like that? That's like you calling him out. I won't call nobody out. No, 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 no. I'm out. telling you, it's like it's like you're calling him out, saying you're not doing your job. Well, there's a way to handle I'm all this good on a nice. He's, he's all good. Right the man says good. He's all good. You're I'm making good. it bigger I'm than what it is. I'm good. You're I'm making it bigger to, than I'm what it is. I'm trying to do the job I Wait, can because you come in here. You're making it bigger here directing. You're making it bigger than what it was. We all good. Me and producer are good. I tell you. You're, you're making this into... I tell you. you as a frat brother, man. You're making really, this into Watergate. Really, it's not Watergate. It's real. It's way down there. So it's just like jokes right now, huh? Way down okay. there. Way <laughs> down there. It's making it, making it Watergate. How you doing, Nui? Hey, man. You know... <laughs> you had a great locker room today, Nui. Did, did, was the protected... The sanctity of the locker room protected? But before mm. we go further, Clarence Hill Jr. is here. Joe Hoyt is here. Shock Taylor is here. I'm Newey Scruggs. This is the Media Mash, a round table of media writers and, and media experts and the most trusted man in Dallas-Fort Worth sports media, yeah. self-declared by Clarence Hill. Go ahead, sir. What happened today? Clarence Hill from All City Dallas and Joe Hoyt from All City Dallas. We're going to make sure we put that okay, out there. Okay, we'll see how long that lasts. And, Thank you. you know, we here, baby. We are here. Um, I'm going to let Joe go because he was there. Jock was there. You know, uh, the big story of the week is is Trayvon Diggs and 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 these nuts, mm-hmm. and and the nuts that he gave to and, Mike Leslie and, today. And, see, you know, there the was literal. He wasn't here. He didn't hear you. He didn't, literal, hear, he didn't hear you. The literal. <laughs> all right, I'll explain. Explain. Go ahead. I'll explain. Put it all. In, put it all together. Yeah. The obviously the Trayvon Diggs interaction was the interesting thing post game, and today you know he stood there and he answered every single question in depth. He talked a lot about. You know, even effort and some of the tackling concerns that people had for him. He answered every single question about the confrontation post game, and then after it was over the interview, he goes, "Hey, I've got something for you," and he handed Mike uh, some nuts, <laughs> literal nuts, a can as of, a party, a can, a can of nuts, as a can of these, as a uh, as a remedy, as, as an olive branch. That's what that's what happened today. So I guess he went to St. John's on leash, uh, or you know, yeah, got got <laughs> no, some praying to forgive he, your enemy, forgive he, your enemy. No, he went to Jerry Jones PR one hundred and one. Use it all, make it all of a hey, live all boats. He it was a great spin on a potentially negative situation. It was a great spin on a controversial situation. He came out. He talked in front of the media. He answered every question. He was probably one of the, it was one of the best interviews we had with Trayvon Diggs in a long time. Most candid I've ever seen. Mo- him. Very candid. Yeah. He said, "I'm not Cam Cam Chancellor, tackling in my strong suit." Which I mean, but he just opened and talked about it. He said, "I'm not Cam Chancellor." And then at the end, 
we're going to make a little fun. He's going to spin. Yes, I, I, I talked about these nuts. I'm going to give you some nuts. <laughs> <laughs> now, write about that. Yeah. And put that on your TV. And, and it's going to, again, have another viral cycle. But this time... It'll be positive. I'm going to look very good. Positive. Yeah, no, he'll look good because the person he gave it to can't wait to jump on and act like a martyr. And oh, know, he and he asked him, he asked most of the questions. So yeah, it's, 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 it's right cool. off the rip because it, you know it's kind of about him. Yeah, so. oh, I, and 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 no and, doubt, and no. there was more news there. Um, you know, Mike McCarthy told us the Diggs has been dealing with some injuries. You mm-hmm. know, season, you know, not only coming back from the um, the knee from last year, and he's still you know. Doing things, but he said the knee is fine. But he actually has been dealing with a calf that's been bothering him since the beginning. And a lot of times, when you come back from injury, you can open, overcompensate and hurt other parts of your body. And so it's the calf on the opposite leg, but it's been something he's been dealing with. And he didn't practice today because of it, because of something he's been dealing with. Also, uh, Michael Parsons didn't practice today, correct? No. Michael Parsons, Deron Bland, they were, uh, Bland got, um, he's off the um, injury reserve. But he was rehabbing all day, and certainly Michael Parsons, who's because if they'd known he was going to be out this long, they probably would have put him on injury reserve. Uh, but uh, yeah, he he didn't practice today, and I don't. I, there was hope. You think we were thinking they'd be back after the bye week, and he wasn't. And now you think, well, he's going to miss one more game. He'll be back for Falcons, but I don't know if he's not practicing today. You talking like, about Micah or Duran? Micah. Micah. Yeah, yeah well, Duran, but Duran too. I mean, you know, he got off IR today because he had to. Because if he didn't get off IR today, you would have been reverted back to IR for the rest of the season. But that doesn't mean he necessarily has to play. And he was also with the rehab group again. And, you know, we saw it. There was a chance against Detroit that he might come out and play. And kind of really hasn't been a full participant since that week. And it's, and it's interesting and, and, and becoming urgent there because the guy who was replacing him is hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, he's been on IR. Yeah. I can't say his name. You know his name? Amani Arorier. There you go. Arorier, you know, who had replaced Caitlin Carson, who's been out. Uh, Caitlin Carson didn't play again last week. He was inactive. And, you know, he, he practiced today, right? I, uh, yeah. And I talked to Caitlin Carson in the locker room, too, and just asked him, like, hey, how are you? You know, just what's up, man? You know, you've been close. And he's like, yeah, I've been really, really close. And, you know, he, he also said what a couple other players said. It's not my decision in terms of actually playing. Sure. So, he feels ready to go. Um, we'll see how that actually, if that actually happens this weekend. They'll need him. Hey, Rico Donald talked. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. broke the mystery for all you conspiracy theorists who thought it was, you know, odd. I mean, I'm one of the conspiracy theorists who thought it was odd <laughs> right. that he got the flu and, and was unavailable. Now, his story, and there's a lot of details in his story, so I tend to believe it because, you know, when you when you not tell the truth, you leave out the detail. Now, sometimes you can have more details, but here's what he said. He said his temperature at one point was 100.8, and it was his decision to play. Then it spiked to 102.4, which took it out of his decision to play. And the Cowboys had about two or three minutes before they had turned in their um, list of inactives when his temperature spiked. It took, gave some Tylenol to him to lay down. His temperature dropped, but by then they had already had to declare him inactive. Yeah, and and, and just— and That could be why he looked salty when he was out there, because he's like, damn. I'm, well, further insight, you know, because— Talking to people that know Rico, talking to Rico, he's not a guy that's going to lie, okay? Because if, if they if they was playing some funny business, he'd have told us, you know, just like our boy Phillips, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> it, it was going to take a lot for him to to lie, to, to, to continue that lie. And he said he started feeling bad Friday, Saturday. It wasn't just something that came up Sunday, certainly. He started feeling bad Friday and Saturday, and certainly we got to the game. He's, he said he had chills. Uh, he had the fever. All of those things that that went along with why he was feeling bad, and he said it was personal for him because he has a history of not playing, he has a history of being injured, he has a history of not being available, and with his history, he said I wasn't trying to miss no games, you know, I, I you know, I don't want to miss a game, especially when I'm not hurt, you know, and he wanted to play, and so uh, it was no conspiracy. He, he 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 was sick. He said he felt better Monday, you know, it calmed down. He was ready to go Monday morning, and as as we were told he was good to go. The game was on Monday. <laughs> He'd been ready to play. But there was no conspiracy there. Um, we also talked to our, our favorite other running back. Yeah. Dalvin Cook. <laughs> Dalvin. He, he was only about 90 yards short of 100. <laughs> <laughs> 
He was he was it was a humble down for cooking. Find out what everybody else has been finding. <laughs> he was <laughs> he, he dirty. He learn from, he no, he was already dirty. Graduated from clearance school. Boy. <laughs> he then took that clearance course in dirty one hundred and one. But <laughs> chill you. He, 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 he replaced he, Trump University. <laughs> chill you. He talked about you know just but you know obviously did not have enough opportunities, not have enough carries and. <laughs> you know, and, and which everybody else has been saying what they've been you saying all along. I, mean, I, I, I feel good about what we can do. We just haven't had a chance to show it. <laughs> just <laughs> running. I games. don't know, man. I, you're just not going to be productive with three dudes getting five carries, man. You better off giving one dude 15 to see what he can do. <laughs> and, and, and the other two or three who mad, guess what? You just have to be mad. Hey, that, hey, you, you hold tight for a moment. Those of us with kids, sometimes you just tell them. I don't care about you being mad. Deal with it. Now you can well, join us again. And it wasn't about being fair. I, I think that, you know, Mike McCarthy told us today, you know. For the first time, too. That, for the yeah. first time that this this committed thing is not ideal. <laughs> you don't really want to. <laughs> yeah. <don't> really. <laughs> not, not preferred. Really? Not preferred, you know. Really? But it's, it's best with the backs we got. This is the best so way we got to do it. Otherwise, ain't none of y'all no good to me. And so I'm just going to spread it around. I have no lead dogs. So. <laughs> yes, that's a better way to say as, it. As the old person used to say a long time ago, if you got three, you ain't got one. And whose fault is that? They, uh... I mean, it's the coach or the GM or the GM or the coach. And, that, you know, this, uh, you know, this thought process, well, if they'd have got somebody else, it wouldn't matter because the offensive line so bad. I'm sorry. And I, 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 I get tired of this narrative that if even if it had been King Henry, he wouldn't have made a difference. King Henry would have made a difference. Okay, because he's gonna break a tackle or two. Good, good running backs, you, and and you never turn down putting the best players on your team. And you, I, all you gotta do is for for those you don't know, Joe. You may be too young to remember. It was LT going to the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Chargers can run a football. All of a sudden, you put LT back there. Guess what? Regular dudes all of a sudden looking like become Pro Bowl. Dude, that's what I, mean. I told people. Special on our, players make make average dudes look good. That's what I told people on our podcast. They all he wouldn't have made a difference. Every top five running back except for Zeke has gone to a bad team. Mm-hmm. You go back in the history of time, the Oilers wasn't no good when they drafted Earl Campbell. The Bills wasn't no good when they drafted O.J. Simpson. The Bears wasn't no good when they drafted Walter Payton. Uh, Detroit wasn't no good when they drafted uh, Barry Sanders. Somehow they were able to run the ball when they got those guys. Uh, Tony Dorsett was drafted to a good team. Well, I said most of them. Mm-hmm. I didn't include Tony for a no, reason. Right, yeah. <laughs> I'm just and the Chiefs didn't do nothing until Lou Saban showed up in year three. Okay, but what I'm saying is – you most of them have go to bad teams and they 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 were drafted out in bad teams for a reason. Yeah, well, you know Tennessee. Uh, okay, what? So what is? So they had Derrick Henry. Is he leading the league in rushing? Is he? He doesn't no, have to lead the league in rushing, but <clears throat> would he make a difference? Would Dak is great with the, the play red, pass? The red the zone. threat. The threat of the play pass is much better with with Derrick Henry. And the red zone. The red zone numbers are definitely not as skewed. Yeah, that we, about, we got Zeke to do the red zone. That's what he was brought here for. He's discombobulated about that. I'm, I'm <laughs> is sorry. That, is that the new word? I'm sorry. Dumbfounded. <laughs> I was going to say you switched up. Dumbfounded. What you mean? What you mean? What you mean dumbfounded? He don't understand why he's not being used in the red zone, although he was used the other day again. I was going to say he used the other day, got a touchdown. That has not been the case all season. Discombobulated. Discombobulated. We're, we're all discombobulated about this running game yeah, and use. Let's go to a break, Nui. Okay. All right. Uh, Jock producing as well. Uh, producing. <laughs> Jock, Jock Taylor. Uh, yeah, Joe, I'll, let me know what you'd like to do I when we come back. Break, I got we'll go man. from there. I'm Nui Scruggs. This is the media match. Drop <laughs> back. Finds Pearson. It's caught. Touchdown. The Dallas Morning News delivers full press coverage of the Cowboys. Bateman straight drop. Throws it over the middle. Irvin. In for the touchdown. We cover your Cowboys from the preseason to the postseason and beyond. Boot to the right. Looking down the field. Lamb. Victory. Game by game. Play by play. No one delivers your Cowboys like the Dallas Morning News. (laughs) Connect deeper to the Dallas Cowboys with the Dallas Morning News. I'm Cowboys alumni, Danny McCray, here with Smoothie King asking, what's that sound? That's the sound of me sipping one of their power pack smoothies with over 10 grams of protein. With real fruits and organic veggies because at Smoothie King, what you see is what you sip. So grab a delicious Smoothie King smoothie, throw a straw in your jaw, and get sipping real. Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. 
To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection. Featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more, the bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. Hey, Cowboy fans, I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. But lately, I've been learning a new game, crypto. Sound confusing? Don't worry. Even us pros were rookies in crypto once. That's why I trust blockchain.com. They make crypto easy. No confusing jargon, just the tools to help you win. Prescott keeps it, slides with a first down. Invest like your icons, where everyone is a rookie in crypto, with blockchain.com. Perfect throw, my goodness. Wow, did he ever thread the needle. Visit blockchain.com slash cowboys to get started. to Media Mash. Mini Mash, I'm Newey Scruggs, hosting and uh, produced by Jean-Jacques Taylor and Clarence Hill. Joe Hoyt is, is here as well. Joe, you got some uh, breaking news here about the, uh, the kicker, Brandon Aubrey, the Cowboys? Yes, yeah, it's the final day he'll be on the injury report with jury duty because <laughs> the case is over. And <laughs> the person that they convicted is getting 65 years. Damn. And why is 65 important? Because it ties his longest field goal. There you go. <laughs> you got to bring it on home now. <laughs> you, you left it hanging out there. You got to put it out there. Put it together. Dwayne Wade to LeBron. <laughs> and, and this was a criminal case, correct? Mm-hmm. A strangulation, I believe. Oh. Yeah, that was the alleged but now convicted situation. He's going to write a book. Being a juror. All right. Okay, 65 years, man. Kicking it on the jury. Okay. That's, that's the title. All right, Joe, it's your turn to produce now. What would you... What, yeah, Chris, yeah, the, the, the lighting in like here, go, it, the lighting is a lot. You know, can we can we tone this down a little bit? That's that, you know, that's just my perspective here. I'm totally kidding. Don't do it. It's fine. I'm working on it. <laughs> I appreciate you. I'm done Spielbergen. Oh, okay. I mean, I just want... you have anything you want to add, I though? I don't you want, want add... you to feel left out in here. No, no. You I'm have anything good. you want to add to the conversation, though? About the Brandon Aubrey or the just in general? Aubrey, the Cowboys, what you start in the locker room, you know? Yeah, I mean... I mean I, if not, Clarence is ready to take over. I was going to say, I mean... How you feel about Trayvon and Mike is telling you you don't know how to do your job? Yeah, well... I think they could benefit, honestly, the locker room could benefit from a reporter just talking to him and just... Being like, hey, by the way, preseason, here's what we're going to do. And here's what our role is. I've kind of thought that. I don't know if they'd listen or not. Probably not. No. But some people might benefit from it. No, no, There's a misunderstanding is, you know, of what reporters do and the player's perspective. But Micah and uh, Diggs say they're going to bring on a reporter to help them have a bigger understanding of that. Isn't that true, Mr. Hill? Listen. Yeah. He was already trying to leverage this in negotiations with uh, all city. Listen, listen. If you want to win, put chili. <laughs> Pop if you want to win, put chill in, okay? Says who? Says chill. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know? It's the first the thing you learn chill right? you. <laughs> I mean, first of all, don't don't make this about me. Michael volunteered me on his own. This guy got PT here. <laughs> Michael volunteered me on his own. He said we should bring a reporter in. Your friend from the station said that, I'm sure it's not going to be me. And Michael said, I think we should try Clarence Hill Jr. He has personality. He's funny. TV personality. He said, he said TV, TV per- personality sure specifically. Did. TV per- got a TV face, too. I know. I, I, got a TV face, too. You, you're welcome. TV face. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, New, for putting me on TV. You're welcome. Putting that TV face out there. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Tell them, tell them what they said on, on our city. Somebody was trying to holler one day. Yeah, multiple grandmas try to holler at you. <laughs> multiple grandmothers <laughs> try to holler at you. Putting in a little chat. He, kinda he also doesn't know what AF means, and we're... Just don't repeat it. Somebody said I was fine AF. On, on, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you for on, limiting on, on, on the chat there in our city. And you're saying it was an upper demographic when you said it? Yes. She said it was her mama. She didn't say grandma. But she was a mom herself. We don't know. So it was a sources, sources indicate. <laughs> locking, that, so you're locking that demo up right there. That. Listen. It's been locked up. Listen. <laughs> Rather somebody like it or nobody like you. I just want to let the record show Okay. Good. I'm, I'm happy for you. Man. Yeah. I'm happy for you. Did you guys see the tweet from Pop Micah? About yeah. Oh, yeah. The, okay. Kind of. I kind of assumed that. How could you not see it? I didn't see it. Yeah, and, my boy and I retweeted was, it I was, about 12 times. I, I didn't see lie. it. I was scolded. Did I say you? 
I was scolded because I didn't see it first. But oh, you I were did. scolded because you didn't yes, see it? Yes, yes. From... Yeah. I got multiple texts to ask. Beam, me to Chris Beam and I didn't know about it, but we knew by the end of yesterday. Who, who you got man. text from? Hey, I'm not revealing my source. Who you got text from? I'll go to jail before I reveal <laughs> my source. So is it Tuesday? I mean, you talked to Mike? I have not. He tomorrow? wasn't in the locker room today. You okay. know, he put it out there. You know, I got to get my you available? My lawyers on the case. You know, I got you know. Yeah, cause Cut check. Cut check. Cut check. Oh, now he's cutting a check. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get a check. You're not doing a guest appearance? I need a check. If they're getting paid, I need to get paid. <laughs> Did I work? Everybody else on the show getting paid. Why I ain't getting paid? Doesn't Micah own the company? Yeah. The president? Yeah. So now president of that division. I don't think he can take a check from a linebacker that you cover. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. All, all City Dallas is not the Star Telegram, so they may have different mm, rules. They, right? they may not have journalistic rules like that. It may be different. Listen, it will be interesting, but, but getting back to the, the meat of the story, they were talking about media coverage. And we talked about that with Jordan and, and Jock and Jordan Lewis got, you know, got a little conversation on uh, Twitter or X yesterday about it and that the local media should protect them. And I don't think that's the case. I do think in this case, uh, the way the story went viral, it was, it was a local media not telling the whole story. And in what sense? Because if we talked about reputation, yes, Diggs has a reputation of not tackling. But on this Sunday, this case, he was the most physical he's been all season. He was setting the edge. He was tackling. He was doing – this was his, actually his best game of the season. And so that's why he was particularly miffed that he had his best game of the season, was his most physical of the season, and he's going to get hit with a tweet about his effort and not being physical on this day. And I think that – a lot of times, I can understand nationally when people don't see you and they just look at the play, but if you've watched him play all season, this was the wrong game to, to criticize him for his okay, physicality. So, so let me interject right there, okay? So, yeah. so he got mad about one social post. There's a whole bunch of people that cover the team, okay? So when, when a guy like George says, you know, you guys should protect and do whatever, whatever, because one person decided they want to go this way. Nah. I'm just saying, because that, that's when it becomes the whole, it's like when we was kids, you know, y'all kids. No, no, it was her. She did it. <laughs> no, I, I, I hear you. And but, that's the thing that trips but, me out but, at but, times. But I'm talking about the bigger picture thing is okay. that, you know, because we were talking about, yes, it's not our job to protect you, but it's our job to tell the whole story. All right. Because mm -hmm. we see the whole story. Because we're there every week. And as a reporter, I would say that watching Diggs play all season – Every game all season, this was his most physical game. I hear you. And so to say, well, I don't know what's going on at play, but Diggs has been physical today, so put it all together. And I think that's what he was disappointed about. And I had my best game physically, and you're going to kick my butt over this. Okay, so then once again, it comes back into who who – who are you valuing, you know, the opinion of? And it's, it's not a person, though, but because when it, when it goes on Twitter, it takes a life of its own. And, and there are more people that see it and go with that narrative because you, this is your reputation. So it's really more about his reputation. I don't think he looked at that man's name, per se, when he saw it. Somebody else probably sitting to him. So you're, you're saying he, he should just be mad at that person. He, he's mad at that person. He's just mad that he my name is in the mud over on a game when I was my most physical. Why would you, like, I always felt like, why would you care, man? Well, that's yeah. what that, and, and, and we talked to Dak. Dak said, I don't care. I mean, to me, it's no different than when I was a columnist at Morning News or I was a columnist at ESPN. And people send you, they didn't like your column, so this is about you, and this is about your mama and your daddy and this and that. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care, dog. I mean, it, I had to tell my parents, now y'all need to quit reading the comments because it's bothering y'all. I, I don't care what people yeah, say. Yeah, but, but everybody handles things differently. And, and, and so um, to, If you're a professional football player, see, 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 you, can't, you can't get that you, caught up you, in what. Okay, now you yeah. shouldn't. Let's say yeah, should. I mean, play yeah, for you Nick Saban. You play for Nick Saban. Because clearly, something. numerous players get caught up in it. Yes, I'm saying you shouldn't. Uh, That's what I'm saying. But it, there's a lot it's of amazing get... to me why you would let somebody. And he's not the first one. You go back to Des Bryant, Cole Beasley. He, he, I mean, this <laughs> is Beasley not. Is I mean, funny. I mean, it's not the first one. They, they, it's no. And some people. Well, I don't... think a big part of it is they don't even understand what the media does, and that was my whole point exactly. yesterday. Like they, they, like I was talking to Jordan today. I was like. 
No, I can, I was talking to somebody. Could have been Jordan, could not have been Jordan. I can't remember. Uh, but it was like, people don't know the difference between a beat writer and a columnist and a national writer and a blogger. And, you know, right. I mean, they just have no clue. And they just lump them all together and, uh, you know, and say the media does this. Well, the media is a bunch of different people. There's some good media members and there's some sorry media members, just like there's some good players and there's some sorry players. Right. Who are you valuing the opinion of? Maybe that's the better way to say what I was saying. Like that, that's the thing I constantly tell people. He's even when, just you know. just an example with the finals last year, because because I don't I don't watch the, the those those ESPN shows. Right. I love Swagoo, my guy. I love Swagoo, but right, I don't right. watch those shows. So my mom says to me, "Is Luca in shape?" He's like, "Oh, you watching <laughs> one of them shows?" Yeah. I said, "You know, mom, it's pretty interesting. He's in shape when they beat the Clippers." <laughs> it was in shape when they beat Timberwolves. Nah, in shape think. when they got to the Western College Finals and won that. Now all of a sudden the dude ain't in shape. It's like you got to stop listening to people who are doing a show. It's showbiz, and you have certain people who do work in our industry who put out some stuff for their own personal freaking showbiz. And that's the guy that Trayvon decided to go deal with. It was a dude who's sitting up there worried about his own freaking clicks. It's like, nah, man, not that one. Not that one. Yeah, but you know that he don't know that. So that's two different things. You, yeah, this is true. Okay, but yeah, yeah but see, true. so you bring your personal opinion that he don't know this that. This ain't no personal opinion, it's a fact. No, okay, but, but my point is. is your pers perspective that he don't have. He don't have that perspective. All he knows is his name's in the mud for, for <laughs> on the game when I have my best physical game. And, and, it, and I'm and and for and I'm gonna address it right now. What's his concept? He, I'm it doesn't matter. No, no, it does matter. Because to you, it don't matter to him. It matters to you. It don't matter that I make millions of dollars and my contract is his 20 times over. It don't matter. <laughs> it shouldn't matter, because at a certain it, point in time, there's certain people that can't get into my headspace. Well, no, that's, shouldn't. that's why everybody that's shouldn't. To you. That's why everybody different. That's why everybody different, though. Everybody ain't like that. I mean, he apologized today, too, because he knows he shouldn't have done that yeah, the way I mean, he did it. I mean, yeah. and the crazy thing about that, if that interaction happens in the locker room, it, in, you know, things are going on, it sure. doesn't go viral. Sure. But the, it's the fact that he full pads came outside. Yeah. What is right it's not a good. It's not a good look. It yeah, made it seem like the losing this game was not the most important thing. The optics were right. terrible. Hunter right. Right. part terrible because Rodney Harrison but losing was like, the game is why he was all pissy like that. And, and Rodney Harrison and Tony Dungy told me after was like, you know what, you got to go pull you. You go find a person like that because it means that much. You, you go find him and go someplace and have that conversation, yeah. which I'm sure that happened to you before when you were covering the beat and and, and to you I, as well. I, I know, but we got we got to stop the narrative just because somebody's in the NFL and plays gets paid a lot of money they're not sensitive about their name i mean you maybe they shouldn't be and maybe you don't have that way but people are all built differently and there are people who are going to be sensitive about their name what's said about them i don't care how much money they make well the size of the check doesn't doesn't affect that because that's all about who you are and how you how yes. you get down and it's also not going to change by the way i mean that's the thing moving forward for trayvon he's this is still going to get comments like this so, right and it's like Dak prescott you got to understand at a certain point this this comes into me yeah and, well, and i think and, that's and what i would think that's of a guy like get. this that's been in it this long well, Dak with, a brother, with a brother in the league well no that, you know what happened dog them cats have all been a part of 12 and 5 teams they ain't really faced no scrutiny point. they haven't really been criticized for their performance now they got criticized for playoff performances but guess what happened Season over. I don't see y'all no more. I go off, do what I do. Right. This first time they really been hammered. Yeah, in the, the middle season. of the season. And right. really, they ain't been hammered yet. Wait till they hit that <laughs> five and ten mark. <laughs> then he gonna feel a, like, oh, this is what it's really like to yeah, get yeah. eliminated from the playoffs. Right? Yeah, because this 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 is just a little bitty stuff now. Yeah, this is not. They, the, they still believe it's not the gonna wheels have a, falling we, off. We it's not fair, headed for fair, that top five draft pick. They, they still believe it's gonna be a fair tale ending. Yeah, let's, I want to say it. Let's dive into that next. If you say so, because you run things. Let's dive into the most Boss trusted man. man <laughs> in still believe Dallas you. I believe Sports media that Micah Parsons wants to talk to uh, Clarence Hill Jr. of All, All City Dallas, his All City Dallas partner Joe Hoyt, my man Jacques Taylor, the author. I'm Newey Scruggs. This is Media Mash.
It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the Playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code CowboysVIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code CowboysVIP. Raising Cane's presents the other rules of football. Rule one, any broadcast without the express edition of Cook to Order Cane's Chicken Fingers is prohibited. Rule 12, no crinkle cut fries, Texas toast, or craveable cane sauce constitutes an illegal formation. And rule 31, anybody who loves to feed their game face is an eligible receiver of Cane's. When it comes to winning game day, Cane's rules. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love, go Cowboys. Drawback, finds Pearson, it's caught, touchdown! The Dallas Morning News delivers full press coverage of the Cowboys. Bateman straight drop, throws it over the middle, Irvin, in for the touchdown, Cowboys! We cover your Cowboys from the preseason to the postseason and beyond. Boot to the right, looking down the field, Lamb, victory! Game by game, play by play, no one delivers your Cowboys like the Dallas Morning News. <laughs> Connect deeper to the Dallas Cowboys with the Dallas Morning News. Hey, Cowboy fans, I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. But lately, I've been learning a new game, crypto. Sound confusing? Don't worry. Even us pros were rookies in crypto once. That's why I trust Blockchain.com. They make crypto easy. No confusing jargon, just the tools to help you win. Prescott keeps it, slides with a first down. Invest like your icons, where everyone is a rookie in crypto with Blockchain.com. Perfect throw, my goodness. Wow, did he ever thread the needle. Visit blockchain.com slash cowboys to get started. Back Back, back, to Media Mash. (laughs) Media Mash. (laughs) (laughs) I tell you, boy. (laughs) Clarence Hill. I don't have a lot to say at your funeral. <laughs> a lot. I'm going to get a speaking role. No, you're not. Before the eulogy. No, I am. I Everybody got two minutes now. We're going to play the music. You go long. I'm going. You all going to play the music, play the organ, play, <laughs> tell a chorus to jump in. Cause I'm going to have a lot to say. Claire Till, Joe Hoyt, he's Jacques Taylor. I knew he scrums. All right. Atlanta Falcons, it's going down this, this Sunday. Mercedes-Benz Stadium, Falcons are first-place team. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the first of two games against first-place teams because after that, the Eagles are coming here. Is this a must-win? Yeah, 100%. And and honestly, it's a game that I, kind of like last week in San Francisco, I still don't see a lot of optimism, frankly, for the Cowboys. I mean, because Atlanta runs 11 personnel, 90% of their snaps, which means basically Kirk Cousins is back there just saying, hey, when do you guys get open? And then we're going to hit off to Bijan or Kyle do your thing, Kyle Pitts. And I keep coming back to, you know who the OC is for the Falcons? It's Zach Robinson. That's a guy from the McVay tree, who's a guy from the Shanahan tree, who runs a zone running scheme that the Cowboys can't handle. Same especially, story, different day. Same story, different day. And I just, you know, this is a must win. It was a must win last week. And I just kind of see a similar situation playing out against Atlanta. You know, the Cowboys' hopes, you know, and there's still hopes. So they still have hopes. You still talk about hopes. They keep, keep saying it's a young season. Dak said it today. It's still early. It's not early anymore in the season. Uh, Jerry Jones talked on the radio about having a fairy tale ending, you know, and everything else. And these young guys growing up and having these growing pains. But their hopes lie in the, the schedule. Yeah, I had some. Yeah, I had some. Yeah, I had some just, I popcorn. that's what he was smirking about. That's a popcorn. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Your COVID hands. <laughs> uh, young brother has some popcorn. I went and got me some popcorn. Um, it's a horrible fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible for not to give me none. Fraternity. But check this out. Uh, their hopes lie in the division. Okay? Uh, Dak has owned the division throughout his career. Yeah. And the division schedule is in front of them. But for them to even if they had hopes in division, you got to stop losing these out of division games. <laughs> yeah, you know, you still got to you still got to be close enough where those division wins will make a difference. And they also are multiple games back in the division, and the only the only team they played is the Giants. Right. So you got one win against them. Right. You got one more game against them. You, and you, then you got first place the Commanders, Eagles so, team that's figuring it out. It's so all fools. If goal, you want right. to, it is fools' gold. <laughs> but if you if you want to have be tangible about 
being able to do it, you got to start now. And you need to beat the Falcons so when the division game come up, they can mean something. Well, see, it's um, it's all about a numbers game. Yeah. You know, because mm-hmm. it's about can you – I mean, I guess we can say can you get to 10 because 10 should get you in. So it's how do you get to 10? Well, I mean, they put 10 games left. <laughs> and you got to go get seven of them. And so it's just a straight numbers game. And, uh, you know, I don't think they're going to win this week. I wouldn't be surprised they got blowed out this week. B. John got 250. Yes, turf. No, they're going to split each 125 apiece. Because on a fast turf, then defense is not. Atlanta can punish them with that ground game, suck them in, and then blow blow past them on the deep ball. I mean, to me, it feels like another bad matchup. They don't cause no turnovers. They don't rush no passers. Kirk Cousins (laughs) went unaffected by the rush. Oh, now he's a bad man then. Mm -hmm. So... None of this plays into their favor defensively, and their offense uh, thus far has been trash this year. So, I mean, division game, non-division game, until they get, season, till they get down by two touchdowns. Rushing yeah. offense is 32nd dead last in the league, get to 74 yards a game. Their rushing defense is the second worst in football. They're giving up 154 yards. Turnover margin, the Cowboys are negative eight, which makes it 30th in the league. So only two teams are worse in the league in terms of giving the football away. Why you got all that stuff highlighted, man? <laughs> because I like to just – basically I'm supporting you and what you just said yeah, with, know, with facts. I'm um, just saying that's how bad it is. You got it all number of yellow highlights. And, and that's from the Cowboys' perspective. And they, yeah. You know, they don't really do negative stats. No. <laughs> but the point is – But there's not and, a lot of positives either. Well, that's the point we've been saying These all year. These are league rankings. So <laughs> there's right nothing there. that they do well. And, we, you know, we're seven weeks in, eight weeks into the season, two months into the season. There's nothing they do well. Worse than the turnover margin. Well, not say worse, because that, that is the worst. Turnover margin. But I'd probably say second worst is time of possession. Hmm. They're giving up 32 minutes and 28 seconds yeah. to the opponent. Because they can't team. stop nobody. So, you know, that's a whole half in a two-minute drill. They're not good enough defensively to be on the field. Then they got penalties. They got turnovers. I mean, this <laughs> This is just a literal poop show, man. It's um, it's you know, this is pause the reset button this year. It's going to get ugly. It's not a lot of wins out there, um, and you know. and and let's be honest. Is yes. that not, is that how it was set up to be? Is that how it was set up to be? Yeah. I don't not understand not why would you huh? why would you I think is, there's a lot of unintended consequences. Yeah, I don't think they set decisions. it up to be like that. Hey, there's a lot of you know, when you we, do nothing to improve your team. What are you setting it up to do? You're not setting it up to win. He was. No, I think it, you can lie to yourself and convince yourself that things will. You can lie to yourself and say, "Oh, if we do this and this, these things will work out and it'll work." It's like when people come up with their best case scenario. Well, you're assuming or you're hoping for the best case scenario when the reality is it could be the best case or it could be the worst case. It don't have to be the best case. I don't think the GM took it took into account of how much depth was lost. And, well, we're just going to play young guys here. Um, no, it, it, was a, it was a gross mistake on his part. Yeah, no, it's a great point about worst case, best case, because I think if, when we were talking about best case before the season, it's like, hey, the running back position has never been lower in terms of value, right? So we're going to use assets that would normally go to the running back position elsewhere, kind of. And we're just going to you know, put no names back there. They're going to become names, and things are going to work out. Well, when you have a running back, when you don't have Derrick Henry, you don't have a high-level running back, and you have two rookie offensive linemen trying to get – you know, synchronicity together and chemistry, then you're not going to get that best case scenario. You're going to get the worst case scenario. And that's kind of what we've seen from the Dallas running game so far. And they've got to do that on every single thing, man. Oh, uh, there's a lot. And then you start thinking about players you were counting on. Mm-hmm. Zach Martin is not having a good year. No, he's according. having a year like somebody who said, I'm going to retire at the end of the year. I just need the one last paycheck before I, before I bounce. Uh, Terrence Steele has not been the player that you thought he would be. No. Um, this is not good. I, I dare say, he he has not looked this bad since his rookie year. This is just not good from Terrence Steele. Yeah, I don't know if he's uh, you know, yeah, that injury he had was major, tore more than one ligament, mm-hmm. and I just don't know if he's even back from that. You know, in terms of physically trusting his body, all those things, I just don't know that he's back from that because he hasn't played like he's back from that. So that got a rookie center who's never played center. Connor Beebe was an outstanding Dude. All-American guard at Kansas State, so they, they've got him playing center. Uh, Tyler Smith is your best offensive lineman, and then you took Tyler Guyton, who was playing right guard at Oklahoma, who came to TCU as a tight end. And the schedule and the, the pass rushers he's seen, right, he, I, oof, boy, I don't know if anybody's seen anything no, like this murderer's no. role that he's had to face. It's just not been good up and front. And then let's talk about your collection of receivers. 
one guy. Does yeah. Cl- Clarence, the most trusted man, calls him CD and the Maybes. <laughs> CD and the Maybes. <laughs> so, so CD and a bunch of Maybes. And so the point is, there's, that's why they don't do anything well. They they really misjudge the talent on this team. Um, you know, and it's now you now you got to pay for it because, you know, I, I like it when Jerry says, "Well, where, I mean, he says it very adamantly, very forcefully. Where are you gonna find players at? And that why everybody in the league is trading for players, and they trading fifth and sixth round picks, which are darts. Well, fifth and sixth round pick in the draft is a dart. Yes, you can come up with it. Sure. Deron Bland, but then you come up with a bunch of no names like John Ridgeway. I mean, uh, it's just a dart after the fifth, after the fourth round. So giving away fifth, sixth, seven round picks, man, please give away. The other interesting note too from Trayvon Dix today was why don't we talk about worst case, best case scenario? We also thought Mike Zimmer might step in and just replicate exactly what Mike uh, what Dan Quinn did. That obviously hasn't been the case. I, they did, have, I didn't. Yeah, but I, I think some people might have thought like, hey, they'd play pretty well right obviously it hasn't gone well one thing Trayvon Diggs talked a lot about today was different scheme we're thinking a lot more which means we're going slower which means we're not in position to make plays we're we're not you know doing a lot of vision defense it's more about being on your man and that's leading to to being out of position a lot of things so my issue with Zim it was not him Zim personally was just you brought in a guy who won with big people up front yeah and so as I said is it the carpenters the carpenters tools you know, you, you brought him in, but, you know, there's no – Kevin Williams wasn't coming through that door. Sharif Floyd not walking through that door. You know, you don't have what you what we saw him win with in Minnesota or in Cincinnati. And a ton of injuries on that D-line, too. And, and so, the you know, though, we go, we're going to count on Mozzie. Huh? What? Lynn Ball? <laughs> well, that was after, you know, that, yeah. was, and that was after camp started. Oh, okay, hey, hey, uh, buddy, called him on the couch. I mean, you could come up with ten decisions that they made in the offseason. And you can just write down the top ten decisions, right. and about nine of them have been bad. Bad they turned out bad. Just yeah, bad. So well, basically, there's it's what, been a okay. horrendous off season. What, what hit? Maybe that's the question. What What did hit in the off season? No, I'm being serious now. Right. Uh, what did what they hit? <laughs> Eric Kendricks. But even kind of. Eric Kendrick. Okay, Kendricks. I give you that. Yeah. I give you that. Kendricks. We're talking about people they've added to the team. Yeah. Eric, Eric. Or just decisions overall. He said, okay, that was that was a good decision. Resigning Jordan Lewis has been, I mean, he's been solid. Okay. All right, we'll give you that. Okay. So there's been a few of them, but not nearly. I mean, the bad ones are three to one. Yeah. And that's just, that's been a terrible offseason. And now the chickens have come home to roost. Well, the GM told me he's the best GM in the league, best effing GM in the league. And nobody can do this job effing better than him. Okay. Let's end that. Send it there. Send it there. Um, That's where we started it. Yeah, yeah. This uh, season. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you back tomorrow? Let me check with y'all. Let's go, Hefe. Joe, appreciate you. I know you you're not back tomorrow. <laughs> Spielberg Hill will be here <laughs> directing, producing tomorrow. I'm merely Newey Scruggs. Thank you, Chris, Jazz, Josh, everybody's part. This is DallasCowboys.com. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!